Hey guys, this is John. I'm playing Totoff in the 15 minute pool on ICC. Uh, Totoff is 2135. Let's open with d4 in this game. Don't recall facing this player in the 15 minute pool. Maybe I played them in Blitz before. I'm going to keep it in uh, d pawn territory and play c4 on move two. If I wanted to go into a French, I could have with e4. Um, hmm. I played a lot of knight c3 on my channel already, so let's play knight f3 and mix it up a little bit. Check. With knight f3, they can go Bogo Indian like they just did. Bishop b4, check. Uh, d5 was another option. c5, trying to get into a Benoni was also possible. Um, hmm. I'm going to play I'm gonna play knight bd2 just to try to keep it in offbeat territory. This isn't the greatest move. I think bishop d2 is better, but this is all right. Um, let's play g3, just preparing a fianchetto. They can play bishop a6 and attack the c4 pawn, but my opponent just settles for bishop b7. Okay, so we're both castling. So it's been a little while since I played a 15-minute game just because I was out of town, but um, I'm at 23.68. Still active in the 15-minute category, so I'm still showing up in the best list, which is kind of nice. Um, I'll probably take with the bishop. I'm just trying to figure out my game plan if they go knight e4 and attack uh, the uh, bishop on d2. But I think I can play bishop e3 or maybe just bishop back to e1. Both moves look plausible. Okay, d6. So black has a... A flexible Nimzo style setup right now. He's just going to play knight bd7 and likely go for c5. A lot of times it's desirable for white to play d5 and try to get black to take and then move this knight away so as to uh, pin the d-pawn because the bishop on b7 would be hanging. But I don't think it's it's sound here. I don't think I can get away with that. So let me just figure out how I want to play this. I think I'm going to start with rook c1, and then after knight bd7, I might play b3, which looks odd, but my idea is um, like b3, bishop c3, and if it gets attacked with knight e4, drop it back to b2. The only thing is I wonder if I have time for that. If b3, knight e4, I might be able to play knight g5, in fact. Knight takes d2, bishop takes b7. Mm, I have hanging pieces on f1 and g5 in that case, though. Okay, I'm just going to do this now. It's a useful move. Um, if knight in, I can always play bishop e3 if I want to change tack a little bit. Okay, so he, in fact, plays a move other than knight e4. So now I think I'll do this. I'll continue with my plan. Yeah, I think if um, knight e4, bishop b2, I like my position. I can think about playing d5, or I can maybe play knight d2 in that case. Okay, plays bishop e4. This is a typical operation, so trying to um, stop me from ever playing e4 uh, by putting a piece in the way. Now, the usual prescription for this is to play a move like rook e1 now, so I'm going to play that right away. Then move this bishop to h3 or f1, and then play knight d2 with the eventual goal of playing e4. So that's what I'll go for. Um, bishop h3 or bishop f1, kind of a close call. Um, I think I'll opt for the more active move, bishop h3. We're both playing pretty fast. Yeah, I think after knight d2 and e4, I'll be enjoying a slight advantage with my bishop pair plus center. I've had positions of this type before. Uh, I distinctly recall, recall a tournament game I played, um, I think it was last fall, maybe in um, November or October, where I had a scenario almost identical to this. I mean, the position was almost identical too. And it's comfortable for white. Yes, black has an extremely reliable position, but it's hard for black to um, hit upon a lot of play, really. Because with this simple plan of moving the knight and pushing e4, white just has a, a game plan in mind of expanding, and black really can't say the same. It's harder for black to... Wow, he takes on f3. But it's harder for black to um, like initiate um, a pawn storm or anything, or 
really do much with their ponds because it's their structure is almost perfect the way it is. This is interesting. So giving up the bishop pair but pushing d5. I don't want to take that pawn because knight takes d5 and I have an isolated d pawn which they're blockading. Yeah, that that deserves merit for sure. The way that black is playing this. Um, I could try f4, trying to go f5, but that gives away this square. I could maybe play queen d2. That looks flexible. Hmm. What else could I do? Bishop back to b2. I mean, eventually I think I'd like to put my dark square bishop on this a3, f8 diagonal if possible. Bishop d2, try to bring the bishop to f4. It's another plan. Hmm. All right, I'm going to play flexible, just queen d2. Try not to overthink it. I predict he'll move a rook, probably this rook if I had to guess. E8, D8, C8 are all possible. Could move this rook too, I guess, but he might want to leave uh, this rook on A8 to support an A4 push. If A4 now, I think I would play bishop B4. Another idea I may have is to play C5. And after B takes C5, take with my D pawn. The idea there is if queen takes C5, trying to win a pawn, I have bishop takes F6. And if knight takes f6, maybe bishop takes f6 all the same. Okay, so like here, I'm seeing a potential line. Um, let's say I play c5, and b takes c5, d takes c5. If they take with the knight, bishop takes f6. They can't take with the queen because a rook takes c5, so g takes f6 would be forced. And then one option I have is queen takes d5. And if e takes d5, rook takes e7. And I think I have a better endgame. Yeah, actually their knight would be attacked and my bishop would be hitting their uh, rook on c8. However, that line is not forced. So if I push c5, like they do not have to take. I'd be a little concerned that I'm overextending. Hmm. With rook c8, I mean, maybe they're gearing up for c5, but... I probably shouldn't worry about that, having the bishop pair. Hmm. I'm going to give it a shot. It looks interesting. I mean, one line that uh, black might want to look at would be B takes C5, D takes C5, and then just C6, reinforcing D5, like nice and solid. My dark square bishop has a lot of scope then, but they do have two center pawns to my none. My D pawn would no longer be on D4, so two center pawns to none. Let's just pre-move this capture. They could play c6 before taking, but in that case, I could take on b6, and then a5 would be hanging. Could be a tough decision for black. I mean, maybe they just leave the pawns the way it is, because I don't think I'm chomping at the bit to take on b6, because they take back, and again, I'm, I wind up with this weak d-pawn. Maybe I could think about playing c6, but the pawn is likely to just be weak there. If nothing changes, maybe I play bishop b2 to a3 and try to x-ray their queen. Taking on f3 on move 13 was a big decision for black. Um, that's the type of move that is going to echo throughout the game. I mean, voluntarily giving up uh, your remaining bishop and fighting with two knights versus two bishops. Black relying on their superior structure to compensate. Because almost always two bishops is superior to two knights, unless the position is extremely closed or um, the knights are working um, particularly well with the initiative.
yeah, I'm starting to think like Black should just leave these pawns the way they are and try to play some constructive move. The problem is I don't really see a super constructive move that Black has. I mean, actually, now that I played c5, like this rook is misplaced. It's not on a file that's likely to be opened anytime soon. So it just looks off balance on the square. Maybe they should bring this rook back to the center, like rook, rook c to e8, or I guess it's just rook e8, not even rook c to e8. And then maybe try to put this rook in the center on c8 or d8. They're not going to make a knight move. No knight move makes sense here. Um, queen moves don't make sense. The only pawn move I think that makes sense would be um, taking on c5, or maybe a move like h6 or something, but I doubt they'd play a left move. I think it'll probably be a rook move. Either that or the capture on c5. If the capture on c5 happens, so b takes c5, d takes c5, c6, at that point, I may play bishop d4 just to defend this pawn. Looking to follow up with f4, f5. Maybe queen b2 even with the bishop on d4, like bishop d4, queen b2, f4, just so that if knight e4, then I can take on g7. Making him thinking think a bit. Okay, he does take on c5. Now c6 is the move I would play if I were black. And just blockade. Plays a4 instead. Okay, so options for me now. Um, I can play c6 and attack this knight. I can play b4. That's the move that first comes to mind, honestly. Just supporting the c5 pawn. c6, I'm not sure what I gain. I mean, let's say knight b6 or knight f8. Maybe the knight can come here. Um, unless there was some sort of tactic or, or way I could open the position up very quickly after that. I mean, I can play bishop b4 after c6 and attack their queen, but their position remains solid after something like queen e8. So I think b4 could be the way to go now. If c6, the knight moves and then bishop takes f6, they're just taking with the queen. Not the g-pawn, of course. So let's do this. Maybe I'll play queen d4, put the queen in front, and then try to do the f4, f5 plan. I mean, queen d4 kind of begs the question whether they can play e5 or not. Um, I don't know, it's interesting. I would play f4 100% um, of the time, if not for knight e4 right now. That's the only stumbling block. f4, knight e4, second the exchange, eh, doesn't look that great. I think I need to move my bishop, maybe a3 first, just to further solidify our structure. Um, they can advance in the center with e5. I mean, I do have to be wary of that. I think with my bishop on h3, they might be hesitant to do it just because I have this x-ray potential. But then again, if it's a good move, it's just a good move. Um, hmm. Really don't want to play f4, knight e4. Don't think that's in my favor. Maybe though, seems weird to like offer um, my dark square bishop for that knight. But e5 is coming next move. If queen f4, I mean, they could always play rook e8, perhaps. I'm trying to prop up e5 again. Moreover, I block my f pawn. So I don't like that so much. 
f4, knight e4, queen d4, let's say knight takes c3, let's say rook takes c3. I think I'm probably a bit better there. I mean, this a4 pawn could be a target, couldn't it? Um, they could play queen f6 and look for a queen trade at that point. Hmm. Okay, let's try it. I mean, I do have a bunch of pawns on dark squares, and when I push f4, it establishes another pawn on dark square. So maybe this isn't the greatest piece for me. I mean, it's only good on this diagonal, practically. So maybe I'm not, like, shedding a huge tear if I have to trade it. So if knight e4, queen d4, uh, knight takes c3, I can take with the queen or the rook. I mean, rook takes would be my instinct maybe to uh, try to double up, but queen f6 could be played. So I was speculating. Nonetheless, I think I'm going to do it still. So if knight takes c3, rook takes c3, queen f6, if I trade on f6, they might take with their g pawn, actually, so as to meet f5 with e5. It's a possibility. I think I, I should keep queens on the board. I think that's a better way of playing. Might be my best bet. So maybe if knight takes c3, rook takes c3, queen f6, I just play queen d2. How about that? Then rook a3 might be a plan. Um, trying to attack that pawn on a4, and also my queen on d2 would help protect that b4 pawn. I think I like that. Yeah, let's do it this way. He'll still have trouble getting out of um, this pin on the h3 c8 diagonal. Like he can't play e5 anytime soon, his knight hangs. Even if he gets his, his um, rook out of the way, like say he plays rook d8 protecting the knight, he still can't play e5 because I take on d7, he takes back, and then I win the e5 pawn. So I think now he's going to have to expend a couple tempi just uh, getting his pieces off of that line, basically. h5, okay. Could be useful trying to go h4. I think rook a3 is decent. Yeah, let's play rook a3. Both creeping closer to that five minute mark, whereupon the, the game officially enters blitz territory, right? <laughs> I mean, maybe his plan will be h4, g6, king g7, bring the rook to h8. I want to try to distract him by attacking this guy. I can play queen c2 as a follow-up. Maybe dropping my bishop back to f1 somewhere will be decent. Yeah, he's going to try to hold down my queen by attacking the b4 pawn. Makes sense. Hmm. Rook b1. Rook b1 blunders to knight takes c5, so I can't play that move. Could I do bishop f1, d3, c2? It takes a while, and he has queen b2 maybe at the end of that line. If bishop f1, does he have e5? Take, knight takes, king g2 or something? That should be... All right for me, I'd say. I feel like my bishop might be a little bit misplaced, though. I know I was talking about how nice it was here, but could be on the wrong square. Could switch tax here and play rook e3 and maybe menace bishop takes e6. I'm not sure it's a huge threat. Well, I mean, f takes e, rook takes, queen moves, I win c6. Maybe it could get him to... Misplaces pieces a little. Rook e3, what about a3? Trying for some queen b2 business. Rook e3, a3, I have rook b3 though. That looks good. Okay, let's try this. Let's try to make him think about the possibility of bishop takes e6. 
wasn't super happy with my rook on a3. It's always okay to um, admit a mistake. That move might not have accomplished much after his reply, rook c to b8. So if he plays like h4 or something, I might sack on e6. So h4, bishop takes e6, f takes e6, rook takes e6. Um, okay, so now it's a moot point. He just defends. Maybe a3. Maybe I should just rule out his ever, um, yeah, let's do that. Ever him playing a3. Also, I fixed this pawn on a light square. Could be a target for my bishop in the end game. It's a definite possibility. Rook e5 could be played. Let's try it once. More sort of scare him than anything. <laughs> Make him think about some potential threats. Like if knight d7, maybe I sack my rook on e6. Actually, that would probably be okay. Rook takes, pawn takes, I have bishop takes e6 check, and I win his knight. It's interesting. But in reality, I think I'd like to move this bishop back somewhere. Like bishop f1, d3, c2. Keep an eye on that a4 pawn. His structure remains sound. I mean... They're all on light squares, restricting my bishop, and there's not that many weaknesses in the structure, like f7 and a4, kind of c6, although I can't get at c6 easily. Those are his weaknesses. We both have two pawn islands. I mean, my bishops, my pawn is uh, complement my bishop nicely, too. f5 would be nice if it ever worked, but I don't see that happening anytime soon. G5 doesn't do much. I think I'm going to drop this back. And if knight d7, just play rook e3. Maybe I can do something with my h pawn. I mean, I could push h4. It stops him from playing h4, but is that really a huge part of his plan? I don't know. Possibly not. Yeah, I mean, he can totally play h4 right now if he wants. I can't push g4 because the queen takes f4. Hmm. Maybe h4, I go back to h3. <laughs> Threaten to take on e6 again. Could be interesting. Rook e8 seems odd. Or rook d8, rather. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to go queen c1 just to defend this pawn. Maybe make him think that I want to go b5, which I might. b5 take, bishop takes. My bishop attacks this guy. Okay, and he went back, so that kind of achieved the desired result. Do this again. More shadow boxing going on. I can play the rook back to e5. It doesn't really do anything though. Let's still do it though. Hmm. Just eye this pawn. There's never going to be a, a bishop takes e6 move when his knight's here. Let's bring this guy back. Expect knight d7. Yep. Again, maybe b5 somewhere. He's just sitting tight. Can't blame him. <laughs> I mean, I would probably do the same. Okay, let's go let's start making some progress. We're getting a little low on time, both of us. Okay, now bishop takes g6 is 
in the works. Doesn't work, he can take with his queen if I play that. Where's he going with that knight? Seems like a very odd move. Okay, I'm just going to do this and prepare bishop c2. I don't understand knight b8. Yeah, I guess he wants both his um, uh, rooks defending that pawn. Seems awfully passive, though. Oh, I really want to sack on g6 now. <laughs> I really want to do it. I'm going to go here, though, and see if I can set up rook takes e6. He knows what I'm up to. H3. Okay, let's go King G2 first of all. Knight A6. Wow. This is provocative. <laughs> okay, let's go here. Bishop takes A4 maybe someday. Hmm. Yeah, he wants Knight B5, clearly. <clears throat> so rookie five, knight b five. Okay, well, we gotta do this. Let's play it. I'm gonna go here. Just guard a three for now. I don't really want to trade yet. The my bishop for the knight, I mean. Maybe rook uh, 1 to e3, put it on f3, go h3, g4, g5 eventually. It's a possibility. Hmm. Super solid. Knight back, okay. Let's bring this over. It's not doing much. Maybe f5 soon? You can take with the e-pawn, though. Okay, let's come here, g4. Let's do it. We're advancing, making progress. Okay, so now his queen's going to have to run away, and we have this move. Hmm. This looks super suspicious. I'm going to come here and try to bring our rook over. Um, let's invade. Try to get to d6. So if queen g7, queen d6. I'm feeling really good about our position now. He's made a lot of very passive moves. Threatening mate. Yeah, that's forced. Let's come here. So how does he defend this pawn? He can't. If the queen comes in, I have queen d8 followed by queen h8, checkmate. I think he's hurting now. Yeah, the threat is actually uh, queen d8 check, queen f8, rook h8, winning the queen. Okay, let's take that guy. Hmm. Let's go attack the rook, c6 coming. We can check here. Also, we stop queen d4. That's nice. Yeah, I think this is practically over. If queen c3, we have uh, check. the bishop takes g6 move. Let's just push. We're not letting this one out of our grasp. These pawns are going to hit the 6th rank. They're worth a rook. Or so I've heard. And he's down on time, too. Okay, just push this. Rook c8, we have b7. Rook takes c7, queen takes c7, and then we queen. Yep, he's going to flag. Okay, so um, we got him in uh, that time scramble situation. I thought he made some weird moves, like doubling the rooks on the a-file. I thought was strange. I'm really not sure the knight belongs on b5.
I understand he might be doing that as a blockading measure, but I mean, the only hope in bringing the knight to b5 is that I trade here. So let's take a look. Check. So this Bogo Indian, yeah, Bishop d2 is the main line. Bishop Check. takes d2, Queen takes d2, but um, you got a, little, a lot of theory if you play this for white, which I don't in this line. Um, but um, I think Knight bd2 is okay in like one-off scenarios. So b6, g3. Bishop a6 might be more testing because that threatens Bishop takes c4 due to the pin. I can play Queen c2 if I want to defend that pawn, but... Um, this is a more modern way of playing versus just putting the bishop on b7. So bishop g2, mutual castling, and then he takes. So this type of setup happens all the time in um, like the Nimzo Indian, for instance, and I guess the Bogo as well, um, quite a bit, wherein white has the bishop pair plus arguably a little more space, but black has just a super solid position. Um, I mean, if you want to win these positions as white, like you really got to be in it for the long haul. Um, grinding away with your bishop pair and in, in your space. Um, this guy's currently going off on me in chat. <laughs> Some pretty funny, pretty funny phrases. Speculator cheapest. Speculator cheapest. Um, but anyways, I played b3 and then this plan of bishop c3. Maybe it would have been better to play knight e4, in fact. So that way I can't as easily play bishop c3 without forfeiting the bishop pair. So I kind of think that might be better. I mean, I was speculating about bishop e3. Mm. <laughs> now he says, no strategy, no tactics, not anything. A perfect quick clown. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so a5, uh, bishop c3, and then bishop e4. Yeah, so blockading with a piece. But um, as I said, I think white has a clear-cut plan against this, which I illustrated in the game. Like rook e1 then move the bishop to h3 or f1, move the knight, and then push e4. That's the plan. And I'm sure this position is um, absolutely acceptable for black still, but I, I've just seen this strategy work for white on so many occasions, and it's never entirely clear to me like what black should do about this plan. He's kind of just sitting there and waiting for white to um, execute it. So bishop h3, and now black makes this interesting decision. Bishop takes f3. Let's turn on the engine, see what it says. Suggesting a normal move like c5. But yeah, like say uh, say black plays something like this. Um, this would be the, the plan in action, e4. And we've avoided trading the light square bishops, so white can still rely on the bishop pair. That's crucial. I mean, yes, I could play knight d2 right away, but that entails trading the bishops. It's not what white's looking for. We have the space advantage. We don't want to trade unnecessarily. So, um, take on f3, and then he goes d5. Okay, and the engine says just play f4 right away. But always I was worried about this move. Oh, c takes d5? Why does that win material? I guess just f3 after this. Uh-huh. Exploiting the pin. And then if knight takes c3, I take here. They take on d1, and bishop takes d7. Looks like this knight is running out of squares. Can be trapped. Or maybe I just go after this pawn and white's rocking. Up a pawn, this knight is still off in no man's land. Okay, so maybe I didn't have to um, mess around with the c5 move at all. Maybe I could have just played this f4 move. Intending f5, so trying to attack that pinned e6 pawn. If g6, then f5 all the more, I assume. Um, if he takes with the g pawn, we're happy to take with the bishop, and now his king is exposed, and we got rid of our double pawn. You can see the eval just going up for white. Okay, so f4 was more direct. Instead, I played queen d2, and then c5. So the tactical basis for this was this line. And I don't think he's able to capture either way. I mean, queen takes is clearly bad because a bishop takes f6 with the discovered attack on the queen. And if knight takes, uh, still bishop takes f6. G takes f6, and then this line I had mentioned in the game with queen takes d5. Um, attacking the knight twice. If he takes our queen, we take here. And this has got to be close to winning for white because both this knight and his rook are under attack. And the pawn on c7 is weak if this rook moves. Knight e6 is the best move. Um, yeah, I mean, white can Check. go into an endgame like this. Take probably rook c5 at the end of that combination. Wins the one of these pawns. 
black is probably busted. Um, so I was expecting like maybe, um, yeah, he did play c6, right? What did he do here? Take, take. Oh, a4, that was it, okay. Yeah, I was expecting c6 right away. Oh, but that drops the a5 pawn. Never mind. Okay, that's that's not good for him. <laughs> I can just take. Yeah, and this must still be bad. I mean, bishop b4 puts him in a pretty pretty hurtful pin. Uh, here, maybe it's a queen move to just pump up the pressure. Okay, maybe that one's not as accurate because of c5. But queen c2. Yeah, now knight takes b3 is not possible because he wouldn't be attacking my queen. Um, I wonder what the computer thinks is his best move here, because, yeah, I was um, speculating that maybe he shouldn't move his pawns at all. So, yeah, the computer says queen d8. I was thinking he might make a rook move, like rook e8 or something. After which it says I should take, giving myself the isolated pawn, but then dropping the bishop back. Okay, maybe I can pop the bishop out here. Interesting. Well, it looks like c5 is all right. I mean... I don't know if I would do this plan over again, especially not in view of um, how straightforward and good f4 was a few moves ago, but looks justified, looks okay for me to do this. So he took, I took, a4, I didn't like that move for him, I just thought that creates a weakness, but I guess he's got to get that pawn off an attack square. Um, c6, f4, yeah, here I wasn't quite sure what to do, how long did I spend on this move? I spent about two minutes on that move. The engine likes bishop f5. The bishop is pinned. He can't take it. What's the point, though? Well, I guess the point is to prepare f4 and still defend that e4 square while maintaining my bishop on this diagonal that I was raving about. Ooh, that's, that's a nice move, actually. And he's going to really hesitate to play g6 because that severely weakens um, this long diagonal. Yeah, bishop f5 might be a nifty move to keep the pressure. I mean, maybe I even drop the bishop back here and Try to go f4, f5 while maintaining control over e4. Because the big issue was knight e4, which he played after my f4 move. Maybe I don't have much now. Rook takes, queen f6. Yeah, if I trade, it's okay if he takes with the knight because I can play f5. And I get to liquidate my double pawn. I might be better. But um, I was thinking he could take with the g pawn. And then f5 is always met by e5. And I'm stuck with this, these doubled f pawns and a bishop that doesn't look too effective. So hence I avoided the trade. Rook a3, rook cb8 was a good reply to that. Because now, I mean, rook b1 would make sense. Trying to defend the b pawn so that I can play queen c2 without worrying about losing it. Queen c2 being to um, attack the pawn on a4 twice. But it runs into knight takes c5 and I have this undefended rook. He wins a key pawn. So now I was like, okay, admit my mistake. Yeah, and I thought maybe he should insert a3. Like, this might not be a bad idea. Um, although I was thinking about, I mean, here, if I if I go for this combo, he has queen b2 is the thing. And I don't really quite have time to go take this pawn on c6. But I guess rook takes e6, according to the engine, is interesting. f takes e, bishop Check. takes, and then take here. Would have been neat to see how this would have gone down. But... um. Instead, he plays uh, knight f8, just staying solid and reinforcing this weak point. And I play a3, fixing this pawn on a4. I, I think that probably the, the proper result is a draw after this, because his position um, is hard to breach. I mean, it's hard to breach his defenses. I was just maneuvering around, like looking for some sort of weakness. He never pushed f h4, which surprised me. Um, I thought he might do that on various occasions. And you can see the evals like staying pretty constant, like the engine is not really finding a plan. It's saying white's better. I mean, white has the space advantage. It looks like I'm a little bit better, but can I really make use of that? I don't know. Yeah, I really thought these maneuvers by him were strange. Especially the doubling of the rooks in, in knight to a6. Queen e2. I mean, you notice, like, my setup hasn't changed very much. I was just kind of waiting to see, like, what he would do, because I thought, like, his own maneuvering might be his undoing. Queen b2, just keeping the tension. Yeah, we were getting pretty low on time at this point. Um, if bishop takes b5, rook takes b5, I don't really see where I'd go from here. Ah, f5. 
So if g takes, I assume queen takes, what happens if this? Oh, rook takes d5, and that pawn on c6 was overloaded. Okay, and then take, and I can get at this one. And then it's a serious advantage for white, because he's got the double pawns. Yeah, I'm basically up a pawn on uh, the queen side. Yeah, that's too much to see with a minute and a half. But now I started playing for a win. Started trying to put a plan into action. And I think I, I handled it pretty well, I felt. I felt um, you know, I'm not going to say I played this completely accurately. Yeah, I'm sure I missed better things. Like f5 was good here, according to the computer. Because if he takes, I take with the bishop. And if he takes again, rook takes, and we're going to come crashing through on f7 or queen e5 somewhere. Yeah, that does look pretty crushing. Oh yeah, that's that's really bad news for black. Um, say like queen e6, check, check here on the long diagonal. Yeah, if king g8, we check. have rook g5, and our queen's going to come in. Yeah, awful. So, um, not that I executed this perfectly, but I started pressing with about a little over a minute on my clock. And just turned out his position was pretty passive. This is a key idea. Once we forced his queen from the long diagonal, we x-ray his king. Yeah, and rook e3 I think is good, trying to go rook h3 and focus on that square. Maybe he should have thrown in d4 somewhere. I thought he might do that. He's likely to lose that pawn, but he does get used to the d5 square. Maybe he can hop his knight in or something and attack f4. And his position is going downhill rapidly. Queen e5 is a nice move. Always threatening an infiltration on d6, and yeah, I think we're winning now. He trades. Queen g7 is forced. And here we're threatening queen d8, queen f8, rook h8, winning his queen. So he has to play some defensive moves, but now we're we're just rolling with these pawns. He doesn't have enough Check. counterplay. Our king is completely safe. Nothing he can do. So I did kind of gloss over the analysis at the end, but I think it was pretty stable. I mean, once he established this pawn structure, should be a draw. But even in an over the board game with plenty of time, if I'm white, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be moving around a lot, and probing black because. Uh, Realistically, black can't ever open the position without um, fearing repercussions, so white can probe for quite a while. I think his uh, main problem was he maybe just overthought it. Like, I wasn't ever attacking the A-pawn uh, with anything more than my queen, so I don't see why he had to... Well, I guess, okay, I did play bishop c2, um, but... I still don't think doubling the rooks was a good call for him, and especially not trying to send the knight to b5. I think he should keep that knight in range of his king side. So, but I think um, the opening was instructed, especially that discussion of uh, the bishop pair in these types of positions and how you want to execute um, the middle game plan in moving the light square bishop, not trading the light square bishops. Remember, you want to keep your bishop pair uh, and avoid needless exchanges. But moving the light square bishop to f1 or h3, moving the knight, and then pushing e4. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I'll be back tomorrow with another video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.